Hello. Bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour everyone and bienvenue to our Explore France live series. Thank you so much for being here. So where you are tuning in from, let us know. Hold on. Hello. Sorry guys. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. So, um, yes, please, I was saying, let us know where you're tuning in from. I'm Tiana Gamez at Explore France, and today we're taking you on a truffle hunting uh, tour in the Loire Valley uh, with owner of Chateau de Riveau, uh, Caroline Legno. So she will give us first a brief introduction of uh, the chateau for those who missed our last tour with her. And then we will then meet her in the um, truffle hunting grounds for an exploration of uh, the truff truffle hunting of Touraine. Um, then we will head to the back to the chateau and learn uh, how to make the truffle dish, the brouillard truffé. So uh, with further ado, uh, let us start our uh, truffle hunt. Thank you again. And hello, hello, everyone. Hello, I'm Caroline from Chateau du Rivo. Um, so today I'm really excited to have you. We are going to go truffle hunting uh, with Serge de Zazar, uh, the Baron de la Truffe, uh, the truffle baron. Um, it's really exciting for me because normally we don't open the castle in this season, uh, but it's truffle season. So we are um, going to have fun trying to find this beautiful mushroom. Uh, just a little world about the castle. Uh, the Castle Rivo was constructed in 1442 by the great chamberlain of uh, the Jesus King of France, Charles VII. He, he got the authorization to construct this castle because he helped the King of France escape Paris. The English were coming into Paris and the King of France, Charles VII, was afraid of them. So he asked his best friend, Pierre, to help him come to Chinon, which is only 10 kilometers here from here. And so Pierre helped him to move all his belongings and all the court to Chinon, where they were established. And in order to thank him, uh, Charles VII allowed Pierre de Beauvau to construct this beautiful fortress. Before it was only um, a wooden house. Um, Chateau de Beauvau is quite unique because it's uh, between the Middle Ages and the Renaissance area. It, it is a bit like a fairy tale castle. My parents bought the castle 20 years ago and the first time my mom saw it, she thought it was like a, a fairy tale castle. So we are in the middle of the field. You'll see when we'll go to the truffle um, trees, uh, two, two hours away from Paris and uh, 15 minutes away from Chinon in the Loire Valley where all the castles in the Kings of France were. And um, this castle is one of the oldest of the Loire Valley because it's from the Middle Ages, really from the beginning of the Middle Ages to the Renaissance. It's a castle of knights and princesses. And here we have a beautiful garden. We have two restaurants where we only serve organic food, uh, a boutique hotel, which is quite luxurious, and the capacity to visit. So um, I hope to welcome you, but um, right now um, I will take you to the truffle hunting. If you want to come and visit us, um, I will post um, a link uh, on the website and you'll be able to buy um, a weekend or a stay in our romantic castle. Hopefully when all the coronavirus will be gone and everybody will be able to travel again. But right now I'm going to take you to uh, the fields where we have all the trees planted, the oak trees, for truffle hunting. So, um, all right, without further ado, let us uh, join Caroline and Serge. Bonjour Caroline. Hello Serge. Bonjour, bonjour. Uh, let me introduce Pierre de Zazar, the Baron de la Truc, with his two beautiful dogs, Michel and Mariette. So I'm pretty excited because it's such 
the last uh, truffle hunt of the season. It's the uh, beginning of March and uh, it's already, I hope we're going to be able to find some couples. What do you think, Serge? We'll see, it's going to be a surprise, but it's really the end of the season. Uh, clearly, we do, do that specially for you. But uh, this is to give you a, a quick overview of what you will be able to experience when you come and visit us uh, next season. So you have to imagine that normally it's freezing cold and you need to dig into the ice in order to get and see the truffles. So, because truffle season in France is, this is the black truffle, the Tuber Menemstorm, the best truffle, I have to say. <laughs> do <It> you is. agree? <laughs> I do, definitely. Anyway, the, the black truffle is um, in France between October 15th and March, uh, oh, until the, like, November. No, November, mid-November mid till beginning of and, March. And uh, beginning of March. So, really, we're quite fortunate that we will be able to, to find them. So, the two dogs are our instruments in order to find the truffles, right? Because there's no way we can find the truffles without them. Well, we could use pigs, but it's not uh, that nice uh, out of the season, uh, especially they're a little bit too heavy. And the problem also is that they like the truffles, so they tend to eat them. So ah, we do not want them to <laughs> eat them. That's not what we want. Definitely not. <laughs> so, uh, is there special kinds of... of uh, no, normally any kind of dog is, is able to find truffles, uh, but it's true that this breed, the Lagotto Romagnolo, which is an Italian breed, uh, is really specialized. They're water dogs originally, and uh, they love to dig. Uh, my garden knows that pretty well. I believe you would hate them in your beautiful garden. Yes. Uh, but here for the truffles, they're just tremendous because they really like to to go out, they have a tremendous nose, and they're able to find truffles that can be the size of a pea up to sometimes a kilo. Really? So I really hope you're going to find truffles for us today. So, uh, Serge, can we go for it? We can go for it. Did you tell everyone that here we're in the birthplace of truffle growing? Oh, no, I did not. Because actually, truffle growing was invented by Mr. Molion in 1790. He was only just a few kilometers away from here, seeing that truffles were growing out in the wild in this area on limestone grounds. Uh, he decided to seam some acorns in the ground in 1790, and in 1799, that's when he harvested his first uh, black truffle. So that was the beginning of the cultivation of truffle, which was a huge business in the, in the 19th century here, uh, as you know, markets like uh, Richelieu, you know Richelieu, this yes. beautiful city, which uh, was created a long time ago, long before the U.S., and that served as a model to create all the American cities, where all the uh, streets are parallel and perpendicular. So that was in um, here in Richelieu, and this market used to retail about 20 tons uh, a century ago. Did you know that we actually uh, found in the archives of some of truffles that were found in the region? Yeah, they, they represent a big part of the revenues during the 16th and 17th century at the, the Chateau du Rigaud. That's the amazing. We actually used to the with, with truffles, so at the time already. Right. Oh, Let's see if the dogs yeah. want to go. Yeah. Hey, Shia. Hey, on cherche un So. Caroline. Caroline, I think would you would I think you could maybe uh, go closer to um, Serge so we can hear you better. I think the microphone. Yeah. Allez, les chiens. They, they really do that as a pleasure for us, um, but uh, they, they love doing it. So that's why any kind of breed can actually do that pretty well. And they can really smell them from quite a distance. Sometimes they can, when you have a lot of wind, they can uh, run for a hundred yards and find the truffle. So Serge, how, how, how large is this uh, estate? Um, we, our farm is, um, uh, well, let's see, they're digging. digging, oh, we have to go. Oh. <laughs> uh, our farm is um, 65 hectares, uh, completely organic. It's uh, a, one of the leading truffle farms in France. C'est bien, mon cher. There it is. So you see the, the dog is, uh, is marking where it is. And now we have to find it. Oh, there it is. Can you oh, see? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, la fille, yeah, la fille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There it is. No way. There it is. You Exciting. Can... You just put your finger below. Can you see it? No, me? Yeah. Yes. Wow. We, yeah, we can see. It, it looks wow. Mm, beautiful. How no, does it smell? It, wow, it smells like truffle. It's, oh, oh my God, it's so nice. No, not for the dog. <laughs> Fantastic. We wish we could smell that. So, um, so when is a Oh look, the, the dog. The dog is looking for another oh, one. Beautiful. Oh, right there. Sibia, la fait. Sibia, 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 Sibia. Where's Kili? Where's Kili? La, 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 la. Here we So, Serge, you were saying that uh, the Loire Valley is the birthplace of uh, truffle. So, what, what, which one is the variety uh, grown here in the so, Loire Valley? I know that so, there are different ones. Here we grow the Tiber Melanosporum, which is the, the, the black, what we commonly call the black Perigord truffle. Um, the, the origin Perigord is just the, the botanical name. Um, in reality, as I explained, it was uh, uh, born here. Uh, the but actually, you can find truffles in the wild uh, in many places around Europe. And um, even now in, uh, in Southern uh, Hemisphere, you even find some in the US. Um, there are some uh, grown in uh, Northern Carolina, but uh, in the U.S. you also find a local truffle in Oregon, which is called now the Oregon truffle, which is again a different flavor. We know that there are over a hundred, almost a hundred different types of truffles of varieties around the world, uh, all with different flavors like you have for the, the different types of mushrooms. And... Um, Digging. Is that yeah, they're both digging. I don't know what they're trying to find. Suzanne is saying that those, those dogs are so clever. So how do you train them to find the truffle? Uh, it's it's uh, first the relationship that you have between the the, the dog and the um, and and the master, and also the basically um, when they are puppies, we feed them with the truffles. So from the beginning, they are used to having uh, um, truffles and eat truffles. The good dogs uh, actually like to eat them. And then um, afterwards, each time they find a truffle, then we give them uh, a goodie or some people may play with a ball. It's the same way as you would train a dog to f search for drugs or to, f or to rescue people. It's the, the same principle. Right. But it's very useful because it's pretty much the only way you can find truffle. Because right. if you just open up the ground, you're not sure that the truffle will be ripe. And you really need the truffle to be ripe. So it only stays ripe for about like 10 days. And so um, it's uh, quite critical to go every day in the field to find the truffle. Right. And uh, what is the, the tree, the kind of tree, you, you, the truffle tree that you're growing? Is there only one well, variety? No, there are many different types of varieties. There we have the white oak, but you can also find the, the, the black oak, the, the green oak, but you can also find them on the hornbeam, on the uh, lime trees, black pine, alip pine, cedar trees, uh, cistus. Uh, so you see many different varieties of, uh, of fields that can actually produce truffles. Do you think you'll, you'll find one here? I don't know. I think she's cheating because I don't smell anything. <laughs> Usually the smell is so strong that sorry, they only speak French. They haven't been trained in English. <laughs> I'm gonna check. You see? Yeah, there's yeah. definitely one because can you see can you smell Karina? Oh yeah. You see up oh, oh, there's oh, she's eating it. Oh, it was just there. Ah, oh, you see there, I told you. So she's oh, she was eating it. <laughs> She bit some part of the truffle, and you see the nice and black at this time of the season. Um, as Caroline was explaining at the beginning of uh, when the, they, the birth of the truffle starts in May, they're completely red outside and white inside, and they start getting their black color only from November with the flavor. And that's why we use the dogs. It's like a tomatoes, uh, where you have uh, on a tree all sorts of tomatoes, they're not all right, they come and get ripe uh, day after day. So that's why we have to come almost every day to check if uh, if the truffles are ripe or not. 
Et bien mon cher. Et bien tout seul. Normally it's really really cold, so it's a very difficult job. It's, a, it's actually a men's job because he needs sometimes there is ice on the floor, on the ground, and he actually needs to. Uh, Qu'est-ce que t'as fait, mon cher? Qu'est-ce que t'as fait? Qu'est-ce que t'as fait? Qu'est-ce que t'as fait? Voilà. Allez, allez, trop de bouche. Dans la bouche, mon amour. Qu'est-ce que t'as fait? And um, what is the kind of soil uh, that those, those trees are growing on in Loire Valley? Uh, it's a limestone. Oh, Caroline, your audio is breaking up a little bit sometimes. Uh, the, The limestone is um, in in Dula Valley. It's limestone. Some say that um, acid soil the better, but in general, the limestone is better for us. And we are very fortunate here because we have this uh, beautiful li white limestone that made all the chateaux in the Loire Valley, which we currently hear called the Tufo, la Tuf. Um, it's a bit like chalk, actually. So the the great thing for us is that. Uh, when it rains a lot, water does go through the ground, so it's not an issue. But it's um, afterwards, it has the capability of uh, keeping the moisture in the ground uh, a lot. And obviously, uh, truffles are mushrooms, so they need moisture, especially in the summer. And um, so therefore, we are able here to produce it uh, very well without having to, to water the fields. That's a great advantage. Thank you. Um, and about your production, on on the uh, production, the size of your of your um, estate, how many truffles can you uh, produce a year? Well, um, it's it's a very long process because from the moment we plant the trees, Asia, um, from the moment we plant the trees and the time we start uh, searching and finding the first truffle, uh, it takes at least four to five years. But there. You only find one truffle here and there. And then uh, full production only comes after 12 years. So it really learns patience. You have to be patient for the truffles to come. You have to be patient for the uh, for to train the dogs. Um, uh, and then afterwards, once we're in full production, hopefully our objective is to reach um, a production of about 20 kilos per hectare. So uh, hopefully, if everything goes well, we'll be able here to produce within a few years' time, uh, just in this field, which is about three hectares, uh, something like uh, 60 kilos on a field like this one. But it's also really important for us to understand. Oh, Alicia, Caroline, we, we can't hear you well. <laughs> so, um, Serge, uh, I'm wondering, so you said that it takes over two years, so uh, how long have you been uh, 12, 12, 12, 12 years. 12 years? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 12. So, long process, very long process. So have you have you been um, in the truffle uh, culture for, for a while? Well, I planted my first trees in 1996, so um, now it's been over almost 25 years, and... Um, Uh, but now doing that as a full-time job, uh, it's uh, since uh, 2013, so it's been uh, almost eight years now. I'm ah, you want to go and see it? Just a bit, poof. Just a poof. Can you tell them about uh, the tour, Hugo? It's good, my friend. It's good, it's good, it's good. Yes, so it's... Um, we're very fortunate here. We're... Um, the, the, this area of Chino and the Touraine is uh, the, the closest uh, production place to Paris where we produce actually truffles. Otherwise, you would have to go down to the Perigord or even for the south to, to the Provence area. Um, here it's uh, only uh, an hour by train. And oh, that's a nice one there. There you have a nice one. Wow. That's a good, wow. good one for the end of the season. Almost, yeah, it's probably 60 grams, this one. Tremendous flavor, really. At the end of the season, it's amazing. So, is this is this an average size of the truffle? 
and um, and so we're always happy to, to to take people around to to make them discover the, the this production. Um, it's uh, obviously everything is happening on the ground, so uh, you have to to have faith in it and make sure that uh, it will produce in the future. Um, but the great thing about truffles, I used to work in fashion before. Um, and what I always say is that it's even though it's the same kind of a, of customers that we have, luxury customers, uh, when you buy fashion, it's you buy it for yourself. It's something uh, relatively selfish act to, to buy uh, fashion. Whereas when you buy truffles, this is something that you want to share. And uh, obviously, it's uh, totally different. And we are would love to be able to share our passion and this good time uh, together with uh, with people, especially because this is part of the French culture, really, uh, uh, what we call the, the black diamond. Um, you can't, there, there's no French cook that uh, is able to cook without using truffles, basically. And um, so uh, yeah, we, we like to be able to share it uh, with everyone around the world. And we, you're very fortunate to have a, at the Chateau du Ribot a fantastic chef, uh, Nicolas Gallardo, who uh, is able to cook truffles in a tremendous way. Yeah, there used to be um, dad was also, uh, yeah. a hunter, so that's why. Ah, there's another one there again. Oh, yeah. bon ah, bien, mon cher. Ah, ah. we're lucky. I don't know if the season is going to end so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so you you mentioned that you also welcome visitors there. Can 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 I book uh, a visit with you, Serge? On oh, my next Please, with pleasure. I would love to, to, to uh, make you come and harvest your own truffle, for sure, anytime, next season, from the uh, 1st of December. Uh, starting 1st of December. All right. I'll make a note. Everyone make a note. Let's meet uh, with Serge uh, and, uh, and harvest our own truffle. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Serge. Yes. The, the, the oak trees. Is there a reason why they are all kind of the similar sizes? Is this the, the optimal size for the for the growth of uh, uh, truffle culture? Well, the, this field is um, these trees are nine years old, and uh, what is very important is that uh, light can come to the ground. So we prune them as if they were fruit trees, basically. Ah. So we're not it's not like a classic oak tree. Um, and um, we prune them every year so that um, we don't get too much shade. It's very important that we get maximum light on the ground uh, when the, the birth of the truffle starts in, uh, in May. We need a temperature of the ground of 22 degrees. And so ideally, uh, if there's too much shade, then uh, you won't be able to grow the truffle. So that's why we prune them every year. We have uh, planted 18,000 trees. So that's 18,000 trees to prune every year all by hand. So it's a bit of a bit of work. If you want to come and help us, you're more than welcome. <laughs> oh, yes. So 8,000 trees. So do you have a team? Uh, and I mean, it's not only Christelle and I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the, the other, your other dog. It's, uh, do you have other dogs you're working with? We have, uh, the, these are the two, uh, these are the two, our two best dogs, uh, Fissel and Nancy uh -huh. We have a young one, also a uh, Rasta, who's uh, just a, a puppy. Uh, she's well; she'll be turning one uh, uh, very soon, and uh, she's going to be a, a, a great, a great truffle dog. And it's important for us to have uh, uh, dogs that, um, on a, new dogs on a regular basis because you can never know what happened. And dogs are like us; they have a humor. Sometimes they want to work, sometimes they don't want to work, and so you have to be able to to, to replace them. They can work up to two hours a day, well, two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. Um, and uh, it's true that during, especially at Christmas time, but man, it's crazy. Uh, we're out eight hours a day. And so we, we try to have several dogs like that. They work for two hours, then we take another one and then start again with the first one. So uh, quite, a, um, quite a tiring thing. And um, I think they're going to be happy to, that the season stops now so they can have a good rest. Right. They, they, they are so beautiful. Everybody is curious. Is, is that the Italian truffle hunting dog breed? Which breed? Yes, yes it's the Lagotto Romagnolo. Uh, it's the, an Italian water dog which is really specialized in, uh, in, in truffle uh, growing. 
Uh, you find them a lot in Italy and more and more now in France. And I know some people in Oregon also that uh, uh, use these dogs or, I, or in Australia. But again, any kind of breed can actually do. The great thing about these dogs is uh, they don't lose uh, the, the, the fur that they have on them. So if you have them at home, um, they tend to be quite, uh, quite clean in a way, which is the, the, the good thing to have. They have great characters and you see they're, they're kind of loving dogs. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, oh, huh? <laughs> they agree, no. they agree. <laughs> we we, we've got a lot of requests here, Caroline, about uh, where where to get the information for um, truffle hunting and how they can reserve um, a, a spot to uh, to come next next uh, next season. So um can you tell us a little bit of what you what you're offering your guests coming at chateau du Rigo for truffle hunting caroline caroline could you i think i think the microphone is on um Serge, so I, do you mind sorry I think it's no problem. can you hear me now perfect okay uh so the um, the we, we actually have a hotel in the Chateau de Rigo, so people are welcome to stay. And we, we can have groups stay in the hotel and then go truffle hunting and then enjoy a beautiful dinner or beautiful lunch made with the truffle that they actually collected. So it's quite an experience. It's uh, really nice. Else, we also do uh, truffle hunting in summer, but it's not the same type of truffles. They're not as um, tasty, but still truffle hunting and you can enjoy the summer season. It's called Tuber uh, Ice Jam. And all the information you can find on our website, uh, chateaudurivo.com, and I'll post more information on Facebook so people, if they're willing to, to come and see. Fantastic, sounds delicious. Hunting your own truffle and then cooking them with the, with the, the chef at the chateau, right? Yes, and um, on Serge's website, you can also uh, purchase the truffles. Not this year because he doesn't have any more left. But uh, can you send them to the US, Serge? Uh, we ship them as uh, chocolate truffles, I shouldn't say that. But uh, very custom cases, and it is a little bit complicated. Um, but uh, no, we still ship them. Okay, so I also, I think the, you posted uh, the Facebook account of uh, Serge on your um, Facebook, and I'll yeah. put more information. Okay, so uh, yeah, we can't wait to to uh, order our own, you know, truffles or come and visit you to to harvest our own. Yeah, and you're welcome anytime. Hopefully, Americans will be able to come soon. So we welcome you. I hope this spring or maybe this summer or this autumn. Yes, we and we have people from all over the world here today with us. I so um, tell us again where you're from. I think I saw people from uh, Ireland, uh, from uh, um, I think somebody, Marianne, is from uh, has a house in Auvergne. Uh, we have also um, somebody from Canada. So thank you all for tuning in uh, with us from everywhere today. So yes, uh, chateaudurivo.com. Um, so, and Baron -la yes, and baronlatrue.com, absolutely. Everything we is in together in the season. Exactly. That, that, that is fantastic. The best of both worlds, the chateau and the tr truff. <laughs> but now I hope you're going to see a little cooking session by Nicolas Golando, the chef of the chateau. Yes, so now that he, we have uh, we have seen uh, the, tr uh, the truffle harvest now, uh, Caroline has prepared for us a little video with our um, their famous chef and we can't wait to share that with you. It was nice to see you and um, if you have any questions, go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so we are going to prepare um, a very simple, a very tasty recipe uh, around uh, our truffles, our French truffles from the Chateau du Rivo. So for this recipe, we need some truffles. We have here three eggs for one person, um, a little bit of butter, of fresh cream, salt and pepper. 
So um, I told you it's a very simple recipe. Um, uh, one of the best way to um, discover truffles. We start the recipe by uh, adding a little bit of butter in the saucepan, a little bit of cream, just a little. And we keep the rest for the end of the recipe. So we break three eggs. We have broken three eggs. Now we had a little bit of salt, a little bit of white paper, like this. And we are going to cook it with truffle and in the bamari. This technique in order to cook it very slowly because the truffle doesn't like hot temperatures. High temperature is bad for truffles. You need to cook it um, maximum at 60 degrees. After 60 degrees, the truffle lose, um, start to lose uh, its flavors. You know? As you see, eggs start to be cooked. So we cook eggs like this in Bamari in order to keep them uh, smooth, you know? Now, to stop cooking eggs, we had the rest of the butter and the rest of the fresh cream. As you see, it's very smoothy. Like this, perfect. And at the end, you had more truffles, always more truffles. Nice. It's a pity that you can't smell the truffles flavor that it's a very unique moment. Like this. For um, this recipe, we have used um, truffles from surroundings around the Rivo. Um, you can see the quality of the truffle by the little marbrure we call in French white and black in the truffle and we are uh, here in one of the most famous um, surroundings for um, truffles uh, culture and we have the chance to 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 work with this unique product that we can find here uh, close to the river so good <laughs> wow that looks amazing
I love your your comments, Mike. I feel hungry the same. <laughs> so um, let us go back to Caroline and say goodbye. Bye bye. It was so nice to have you. Caroline, thank you so much for today. I think I think we have just a couple of questions before we, we let you go. Um, yes, so uh, are you able to give us a little more information about the difference between uh, the black truffle and the white truffle? That is, What's the, um, the, season? the season is not the same because the white truffle is typically found in Italy in September, October, and the black truffle is mostly found uh, between November and uh, March in, in France. And uh, the, the, the taste is supposed to be a bit different. Uh, Sergio, what would you say about the taste? Uh, very, very different. I mean, the, the white truffle shouldn't be uh, heated at all. Uh, it's really something that you add at the last minute, whereas the black truffle can go up to a temperature of 60 degrees. Um, the, the, the white truffle has this garlicky flavor, which you often find on um, uh, olive uh, on truffle oil. Uh, you have to know that all 100% of all the truffle oils that you will find are unfortunately done with artificial flavors. Um, so the best is always to get a fresh product and cook it yourself. Mm. But the uh, great big difference of flavor between both of them. And uh, basically, the white one is an autumn truffle. The white, the black one is a winter truffle. Yeah, one of the best ways to know if you're eating a real truffle is season. If you're eating a truffle in uh, May, if they tell you it's a black truffle, chances are it's not. Or well, it's it may come from the southern hemisphere also. Oh yes. No. Okay, and um, thank you so much. Marilou is asking if uh, if the visits can be uh, combined with winery visit. Um, and, and actually, I want to ask, what is the best wine to, to, to drink with truffle? A Chinon wine, I have to say, because I produce <laughs> Chinon wine. But no, Chinon wine is a very old wine. It's very renowned from Rabelais. And it's a Cabernet Franc wine, which is the... Um, the grape that is the grandfather of the Cabernet Sauvignon that you find in Bordeaux. It's a very rustic, but very, very nice uh, type of grape that gives uh, the wine an amazing taste that goes very well with uh, truffle. And ideally you need uh, old wines, vintage wines, uh, especially then the Chinon can age uh, very long uh, because you're not so much on the food, you're more on the flavors like the forest and the and mushroom which is obviously reminds you of, of the truffles and if you're french you go even more into it and you find the terroir which is the good soil for this wine the ideal one with this you know wine that goes with the truffle would be a limestone oh wow oh that's fantastic thank you so much this there's so much great information. So, um, if you'd like to know more about Chateau de Durivo and uh, Baron de la Truffe for truffle hunting, castle, um, stay in Loire Valley, please. We have posted all of their information in the comments. Reach out to Caroline and Serge. They'll be happy to take you on a, on a visit uh, with them in, in, so in Chinon. Uh, so um, thank you again, thank you Caroline. Very soon. Yes, thank you so much, Caroline. Thank you, Serge. We'll be, I hope we'll be back to see you soon again and um, maybe visit the, the spring garden of the chateau. Yeah, that would be very nice. And the Fantastic. Of, uh, all the bulbs are uh, uh, blooming. All right, so that's it today. We'll, we'll be back at Chateau de Rivo for a, a garden, a spring garden tour. And uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Um, and everyone, if you'd like to watch our next live, which will happen uh, next week, so every Wednesday, we are putting uh, in the links our calendar of events. So next week, we're going to do a fashion tour of Paris with local designers. Uh, the following Wednesday, we are going to discover magical Montmartre. Finally, we can go back to Montmartre. I mean, not be there, but at least, you know, um, walk around Montmartre for a beautiful and magical stroll. And the week after, we will 
go uh, cheese making. We'll be back in the Loire Valley and learn all about cheese making uh, in this uh, fabulous region. So this is the March calendar we'll be posting. So if you'd like um, follow us, uh, put your notification or sign up for newsletter. We, we're putting more information in the in, in the comment section. And um, I'll see you again very soon. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much for joining us. It was great to see you all. Merci, 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 Vanessa. Merci, Jessica. Thank you so much, uh, Padre. Uh, thank you, Tania. This is this is so great to have you all and uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.